back, Kingfish. Hi, Andy. Say, Kingfish, uh, you really look like you got trouble. What's the matter? Well, Andy, in three days I'll be married 25 years. Well, that ain't nothing to be sad about. Think of the fellas that's only been married five years and still got 20 to go. Oh, Andy, it ain't nothing like that. The whole thing is my own doing. Because, see, Andy, this trouble that I have in all started when me and Sapphire got married and went to Niagara Falls on our honeymoon. Oh, George, what a wonderful honeymoon. This has been the happiest week of my life. Sapphire, my darling, I know our love going to last as long as that water comes slopping over them falls. George, promise me one thing. Yes, my darling, anything. Promise you bring me back here again on our 25th wedding anniversary. Honey, I promise. And that's when the thing started, Andy. When I made that promise. Oh, what you mean by that, Kingfish? Well, I didn't give the thing another thought. Until three years ago, on our 22nd anniversary, I was sitting in the apartment one night when Sapphire come in with a big package under her arm. since I hopped the silver? Oh, no, George, no. George, look what I just bought. Oh, a statue. Uh, what one of your relatives is that? <laughs> George, you and I are going to start saving, and we're going to start right now. Now, how much change have you got in your pocket? Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, counting the silver and everything, uh, 18 cents. But where's the piggy bank, George? No, I can't, honey, because I uh, got an insurance premium coming up here. Put it in the piggy bank, I said, George. Now, I've got a dollar and thirty cents. I'm going to put that in, too. Yeah, uh, what happens now? Why, George, don't you realize you've already saved a dollar and forty-eight cents? Well, that's fine, all right. Well, let's open up the bank and split it. George, put that mallet down. We're not going to open that until we save for three years. And every day we're going to put our loose change in the piggy bank. Now, wait a second. What are we saving all this money for anyway? Now, I don't mind scrimping as long as I know what the scrimp is for. Well, sit down, George, and I'll tell you. George, do you remember when we came back off our honeymoon? I said, after we'd been married 25 years, I wanted to go back to Niagara Falls for a second honeymoon. Hmm, I think I do remember you saying something like that. Well, our 25th anniversary will be in three years, George. And if we start saving now, we'll be able to make the trip to Niagara Falls again. But, honey, that's going to cost a whole... George, I've been dreaming about this for so long. Please say you'll do it. Okay, honey. If that's what you want. <laughs> oh, George, I'm so happy. I'll go fix supper now. <laughs> and this all happened three years ago, huh, Kingfish? Yeah, and even Sapphire been putting money in the thing ever since. Coach, I give us a little in two. Yeah, then you and Zappa ought to be going on this trip pretty soon. Uh, that is, if you ain't done hit the pig with the mallet yet. Oh, no, Andy. Many a time in the last couple of years, Zappa told me that she'd really leave me if I messed with that pig. So I ain't took nothing. Yeah, that's good, all right. But, Andy, let me tell you what happened. Well, one day, after we'd been saving for about two years, I turned the pig over to get the manufacturer's name off of the bottom of the pig. Yeah. Well, while I was moving the pig around, uh, trying to get a focus on the name, 48 cents fell out. Yeah, that could happen, all right. Yeah, and anyway, a few months later, I got to wondering what the patent number was uh, on the bottom of the pig. <laughs> well, I picked the pig up, and then I turned him over, and there were the little teeny weeny numbers. Well, I didn't have my glasses with me, 
So while I was shaking, the uh, pig is a focus. Uh, how much did you focus out? Uh, 75 cents. And then the accident really commenced to happen. Well, I was sitting there one day, and I picked up the pig, and I turned it over. I wanted to see how his little stomach looked. Dollar and a quarter. Twenty-five cent piece and a dollar bill. A dollar bill fell out of that small hole? Well, Andy, I was putting on my button shoes at the time, and I just happened to have the button hook in my hand. Well, anyway, between uh, looking at the patent numbers and uh, buttoning up my shoes and focusing, there ain't no money in the bank. Well, at least you didn't take nothing out. Oh, no, Andy, not a dime. It just fell out. But the thing I don't understand, King is if all the money is out of the pig, how come Sapphire don't know it's empty? You keeps it right there in the living room, don't you? Well, Andy, every time some money fell out by accident, I always put in a little something to make up for the weight. Oh, I see. Yeah, but Andy, in three days, when the festivities start, little do Sapphire know that our pig gonna have a little of lead washers. Well, King Fish, at least you got three days to figure something out in. Yeah, Andy. But I don't know what I'm going to do. I've been pacing up and down here all morning. I've gone crazy. You know one thing, Kingfish? You wouldn't be in this whole mess if you hadn't gone to Niagara Falls 25 years ago. You're right, Andy. But I enjoyed the trip and everything about it. The beautiful falls. The maid or the mist. And we even seen a man go over the falls in a barrel. You did, huh? Yeah, and if I'd have known the fix I was going to be in today, I'd have gone over with him. <laughs> oh, I tell you, George, I've been making plans for our second honeymoon all day long, and I'm so excited I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's going to be a wonderful trip for both of you. George, you really must be excited. I never was so excited in my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and to think we owe it all to this little piggy. George, I owe you an apology. You know when Sapphire first told me three years ago that she's going to start stuffing that pig with money? I predicted that with you around, that pig was going to lead a very short life. <laughs> but George, <laughs> you have really stuck to your bargain. <laughs> you know, folks, I've got an idea. I bet it's the same one I got. Let's open up the pig and count the money now. No, no, no. Don't nobody lay a hand on him. We got a ironclad agreement that we ain't gonna open this pig until our 25th anniversary, and we got three days to go. Well, all right, George. Don't get excited. We'll wait for three days. George has always been so sentimental. Come on, Mama, let's get started with the dishes. <laughs> Well, you was better off than I is. At least it ain't gonna hurt you when they start breaking you apart. Three hundred dollars. Andy, I don't know what I'm gonna do. When Sapphire opened that bank, it's gonna be the end of everything. Yeah, that's pretty serious, all right. Yeah, and Andy, who would have thought that a little thing like a piggy bank could cause all this trouble? Well, you know, like you say, Kingfish, he who pays the piper's got to eat his own pipe or something. Oh, I know. That's all right. It's too bad you can't wave a magic wand and make the thing disappear. Then you'd never have to open it. Oh, I know, but... Disappear. Andy, you just said something that gives me the solution to the whole thing. I did, huh? Oh, yeah, I was on my toes, all right. <laughs> What'd I say? Well, Andy, suppose I was to take the women out of the house, and then you come up and took the bank and brought it back here to the lodge hole and hid it in the cellar. And then when we come home, they'd think the bank was stolen and there wouldn't be no blame on me. Yeah, Sapphire would be disappointed, but at least she wouldn't lose no faith in you. And that's the only reason I do this for you, Kingfish. All right, Andy. I'll take the women to a movie tonight, and I'll leave the back door open. And after we are gone, why, you sneak in and get the bank and bring it back here and hide it. Okay, Kingfish. Boy, you sure is lucky I took this thing. <laughs> Turn around a little bit, honey. That's it. That's it. Well, what's going on here? 
I'm getting my trip so ready for my second honeymoon. Well, that's right. We've got to get everything together, all right. Yes, George, you better get your clothes ready, too. We haven't got much time, you know. Oh, no, my thing's in pretty good shape, but I've just been studying here. We all excited about the trip and everything. Suppose we all go to our movie tonight and unlax. Oh, George, I don't think we have time. We've got just too much to do. Don't you think so, Mama? Well, it's up to you, Sapphire. Oh, come on. A couple hours in the movie will uh, do us a lot of good. Well, all right. Well, we'll see what's playing around here. Uh, down on the corner, they got what sounds like a good picture. The badge of bravery. I saw that, George. Well, let's see what down at 134th Street. Oh, this sounds like a beauty. Love in the foothills. I see that. Well, let's see what else is here. Oh, well, how about uh, Moon Over Tulsa? Anybody seen that? I ain't seen it. I didn't either. Well, then we'll go right after dinner. Where's it playing, George? At the Bijou. Well, that's out. I don't like the popcorn they got down there. Well, then you like the popcorn at the Tivoli? Yes, but they don't give you as much butter there as they do at the Strand. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get the popcorn at the Tivoli, butter up at the Strand, and end up at the Bijou with Moon Over Tulsa. Well, that settles it then. I'll get dinner ready so we can get an early start. Come on and help me, George. Did you catch him? No, I didn't. Hmm, that's good. Oh, uh, I'm all excited here. Uh, uh, that's bad. But he dropped his piggy bank while he was running. Oh, uh, this one? Oh, how wonderful! We got him back! Oh, his eyes all right, mister. Oh, thank you so much. That's all right, madam. I am just sorry we didn't catch the thief. Good night. Good night, and thanks again. Good night. We can still go on our honeymoon. Yeah, it's wonderful, all right. <laughs> you know, George, I don't think we ought to wait any longer to open this pig. It's too dangerous having this much change lying around. Now, wait a minute. Uh oh, Sapphire's right. What is that? Huh? No, I ain't gonna let you do it. You can't. I won't well, let you do it. Uh -huh. so don't open the pig. George, you ain't got to Good heavens. George, you broke that beautiful joint in there, Mama gave us. For the last time, I'll tell you, we ain't opening this pig until day after tomorrow. And what's more, I'm going to see that we don't. Good night. Shaking like a 
leave. See, if I'm going to open the thing tomorrow, I can't stall her no more. Yeah. What time tomorrow, Kingfish? Well, Andy, the way I figured it, Sapphire and her mama start digging in the pig around 7 o'clock tomorrow night after supper. At 7-2, they ought to strike lead. And at 7-3, hostilities ought to be blazing on all fronts. So you kind of going to throw in the sponge on the whole thing, huh, Kingfish? Oh, no, Andy. I've been doing a lot of thinking. i got one ace in the hole. I'm going to try and raise a $300 within the next 24 hours. You is, huh? Yeah, Andy. I've been working on two or three money-making schemes, and I only hope one of them click. Oh, that's my only hope. Uh, wait a minute, Kingfish. There ain't none of the crazy schemes you usually think of, is this? Oh, no, Andy. This is the type of thing that any conservative businessman in my position would do. Come on, Andy. You might be some help. Yeah. Just a plate, Andy. Uh, let's go in. Yeah. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Well, I want $300 worth of flakies. I beg your pardon? I uh, say I want $300 worth of flakies, and I ain't in a big hurry. $300 worth of flakies? Yeah, what's more, we ain't gonna like them. <laughs> I know it's none of my business, and you forgive me for being nosy, but just why do you want $300 worth of flakies? Well, I'll explain it to you. Uh, you give me $300 worth of flakies, and I ain't gonna like them. And then you give me double back my money, which is $600. And then I pay you $300 for the original flakies that I done bought, and I keep $300 for myself. Simple as ABC. <laughs> Yes, I know this department was created to lend money. And I was appointed to administer the funds. But I am afraid, gentlemen, that I must deny your request. Then you mean that the foreign aid plan refuses to lend my country $300? That's correct. <laughs> then I want to remind you that my country is ready to slap a rebargo on the exports of steel ingots and sympathetic rubber. Gentlemen, that's a chance the United States government will just have to take. Folks, this is one of the saddest cases we've ever had on this show. The writer is a Mr. George Stevens, and this is what he has to say. For six long, painful years, I've been suffering from a rare case of jumping pellagra, which has baffled the biggest medical brains in the country. I is the sole support of 12 children ranging from six months to five years. I need about a dozen operations personally. The kids need clothes. We owe eight months rent, and the payments is due on the car. If I could win the $300 jackpot, my troubles would be over. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we want you to meet this very unfortunate but brave man, Mr. George Stevens. Well, here we go, Mr. Stevens. You have 30 seconds in which to answer the following question correctly. And if you do so, we'll be more than happy to give you the $300. Yes, sir. Now, you all ready to go? Yes, sir. Now, think carefully. Think real hard. One of the most romantic stories in American history concerns a girl named Priscilla and a man named Captain Miles Standish. Now, according to the story, Miles Standish was too bashful to propose to Priscilla, so he asked a friend to do it for him. Now, for $300, what was the friend's name? Hmm, now let me see. Uh, I know it's on the tip of your tongue. Come on, tell me, say it. Oh, yeah, I remember reading all about the thing in the newspaper. Uh, Mr. Stevens, you have 15 seconds left. You want to take a guess now? Come on, try hard. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny, how you can love. Oh, Johnny, oh, Johnny. I got it. I knew you would. Who is it? 
Who is it? Nelson Eddy. <laughs> Now, you have five seconds left. Now, don't you remember when Priscilla said, Speak for yourself, John. John. No, Mr. I guess I better give up. Uh, Mr. Stevens, now, his first name was John. Don't you want to take one last guess? No, I all done. All done? That's right, John. And you say the bill is four thirty-five? Yes, ma'am, Mr. Stevens. I need another quarter. Oh, I know where I can get it. Come with me. This is money we save for a second honeymoon. I guess my husband won't mind if I shake just one quarter out of it. We're gonna open it tonight anyway. Oh, I can get the quarter next week, Miss Stevens. Oh no, no, wait a minute. I'll get it for you. in there. Oh, I guess your husband might have accidentally dropped it in with the regular change. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> there seems to have been quite a few accidents. <laughs> Good heavens. He couldn't have. Uh, I'll see you next week, Miss Stevens. Well, Sapphire, if what you say is true, I'll tell you one thing. The kingfish didn't take that money to have no good time with. Now, he must have used it, you know, to help out in the house, like paying the rent and buying some food. And when you come right down to it, the money was spent for both of you. Where is he now, Amos? Do you know? No, Sapphire, I ain't seen him since yesterday. Well, Amos, this is one thing George will regret as long as he lives. George Stevens, we're going to open that piggy bank, and we're going to do it right now. We were just waiting for you to get here for the ceremony. Uh, now, wait a minute. Oh, wait. Uh, well, we were going to open it after supper. Right now, George. I want an explanation of this. Yes, you better start talking and start talking fast. Uh, start talking fast about what, Mama? George, I want a full explanation. Uh, something wrong? <laughs> but, George, I don't understand it. When I shook the pig before, there was nothing in it but lead washers. Lead washers? Yes, with the little holes in the middle. Uh, honey, you must then see it spots before your eyes and run forward right on the center of the coin. You need glasses, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, I'm going to make you another promise right now. What's that, George? Well, I'm going to bring you back here again on our 50th wedding anniversary. Oh, George, you're the most wonderful man in the world. <laughs>